The Bible says, Acts chapter 2, we're going to read verse number 1 through 4, and then verse number 14 through verse number 18. Acts 2, 1 through 4, and verse 14 through 18. I'm so glad to be back, and, and at home, folks, you know I'm going to preach on the Holy Ghost on a Sunday morning. It's just what we do, baby. Praise God. Amen. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, somebody say suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled. Everybody say all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Verse 14 through verse 18, but Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, you men of Judea and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words, for these are not drunken as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit. And they shall prophesy. I want to preach on the subject this morning, life's greatest miracle. Life's greatest miracle. If you have the Holy Ghost, nothing should excite you more than knowing that day when God filled you with the power of his spirit that changed your destiny, the course of your life, your eternity forever. Can you clap your hands to the Lord? Thank you, Jesus, for what you're about to do in this place. I give you worship and I give you praise in advance for the outpouring of your spirit. Anoint my mind and loose my tongue to do the will of God today. Somebody thank him one more time for what's about to take place. The greatest miracle you'll ever see is going to happen in this room today. Praise God. You may be seated. Thank you for standing. The book of Acts is by far my favorite book in the Bible. I know you can't imagine that, but it actually is, and it's full of miracles. I have been privileged to see several of the miracles in my personal life that happened in the book of Acts. I have been privileged to see the lame walk. I have been privileged to see blinded eyes open like Saul's were. I, I have been blessed by God to see the miraculous over the last few years, things that I know no human being could do. But the power of God was so real and so strong that I knew that, that this is, has to be something from another world. For instance, I was in South America one time, and a very young preacher about 10, 12 years ago, I remember in a crucial Said as people were getting the Holy Ghost, I'm walking over to a lady who was in a wheelchair praying and watching her get out of the wheelchair and walk and, and taking her wheelchair and throwing it down and breaking it so she couldn't get back in the wheelchair. And then walking over to a man, when you've seen someone get out of a wheelchair, your faith goes through the roof. And so there was a man on the other side of the building that was in a wheelchair also. And I went over to him, and I went down to pray. And they said, be careful. If you try to get him up, he will fall down because he has no muscles in his calves. He was born without muscles in his calves. It's just skin covering bone. And so, therefore, he cannot walk. If he tries to stand, he will fall. But when you've just seen God raise somebody over there, you know God can do it over here because the Bible said that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So whatever God has done before, God can do again. And she, or, and we were, we were watching, we were believing God for something to happen. But the lady told me, just be careful. I, I just kind of shut her out and, and got on my knees and I put my hands on the back of those man's bones, nothing but bones and skin. But I remember as sure as I'm standing here praying and believing God that after he had just raised up the lady, he could raise up the man. And as sure as I'm standing here, muscles began to grow in my hands inside this man's legs. And as I began to pray, I knew there's no 
human being that can explain this. And see, some people don't believe that, but you see, I was there. And when I know what happened, it did something to my faith as he pushed himself out of the wheelchair and began to walk in front of everybody. I realized I serve a God that can do exceedingly and abundantly above all we ask or even think. And it seems unfathomable for muscles to grow out of nowhere, but you serve a God who created the entire universe with his mouth and with his hand, and he can do absolutely anything that he wants to do anytime, anywhere. I was in Muncie, Indiana a few weeks, a few months ago now, about, about two or three months ago, one of the greatest miracles, uh, two greatest miracles I've ever seen. We were in a, a revival, and, and, and as pastor alluded to already, be a witness for the Lord. There was a, the pastor's son was walking through his school hall on a Tuesday, and there was a girl that was in his school that was deaf in her right ear and 90% deaf in her left ear, and she was born that way, 17 years old. The pastor's son had no idea. She was planning on committing suicide Saturday. She could not take it anymore. Being tormented at night, tormented in the daytime, could not connect with her mother. Her mother and father had divorced and all kinds of situations this girl had been through. And the pastor's son bumps into her in the hall during the revival, and, and he, he, he talks to her, and they, they, they get someone to translate into sign language, and he said, you've got to come to church with me. And, and she could barely hear, and, and so they, they signed it to her and she said I'll come tonight and, and she came on a Tuesday night and as I was preaching it was an off night I was preaching on giving actually and this girl who is deaf in her right ear and 90% deaf in her left ear has three dollars and fifty cents watch this and she is saving her money to buy a hearing aid for her one ear her mother has no money and so this girl thought the week before I'll just start to save money now she's planning on committing suicide because all she has is three dollars she can't find a job and so as i'm preaching first time ever in the pentecostal church first time ever in church period and as i'm preaching on giving this girl brings her three dollars and fifty cents and she walks up to the front and she lays it on the altar and she raises her hands and she begins to worship the god that she's never talked to in her entire life when she worshiped the lord she began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. She went home that night full of the Holy Ghost but could not hear. And so as she goes home and she goes to sleep, all she knew when she went to sleep was that in her dream, a man came to her and he was chasing her. And in her dream, a man said to her, because you wanted the Holy Ghost, you will never hear again the rest of your life. And when she woke up Wednesday morning, she was completely deaf in both ears now. Blood was flowing out of her ears onto her face. And she was very terrified. She text the pastor's son and said please tell me what happened I get this Holy Ghost and I lose the 10% of hearing that I had blood is flowing out of my ears what does this mean he said come back tonight and let's see what Jesus will do when she came back on Wednesday night I was preaching my guts out they were not worshiping they were not getting with me and something inside of me began to burn for that girl who had done such a great act of faith the night before and so I said I command her to come to this altar right now they told her what I said she came forward we prayed nothing happened I said I need five ladies that have faith that God can heal her right now five ladies circled around her one lady put her hands on her ears and within 10 seconds the girl began to scream violently as both ears popped wide open and and she began to hear. Our God is a healer. Our God is a healer. Our God is a healer. She ran. She didn't know protocol. She ran to the piano. The man was playing the piano. She didn't. She ran on the. I love. I love when people don't know protocol. She ran up to the front and she was listening, and weeping, speaking in tongues as he was playing the piano. My wife said she ran to the bathroom, turned the water on to hear the sound of water, and began to weep, speaking in tongues. And here's what's amazing. Did you notice that we got more excited about her hearing than we did her getting the Holy Ghost? 
But she said, when they asked her the next week, what was better at 17? What was it better, getting the Holy Ghost or getting your hearing? And she said this, the Holy Ghost was way better than getting my hearing. I'd rather be deaf the rest of my life and have this Holy Ghost than have my hearing. God was amazing, and God gave her both. But she said herself that the power of the Holy Ghost was the greatest miracle she had ever received in her life. The Holy Ghost is the greatest miracle you'll ever, you'll ever receive. I don't care if you're blind, deaf, paralyzed from the neck down, and God heals all three today. I promise you, if you speak in tongues for the first time, that miracle is greater than you getting healed in your body. That's crazy, preacher. No, it's not. You know, I've said this before, but you can go to hell healthy. You can go to hell healed. You can go to hell with a miracle and being made whole in your body. You can still go to hell. But the Bible said in John, if you're born of the water and you're born of the spirit, that's the key to getting into heaven. If you're not born of the water and of the spirit, you're not in the kingdom of God. The Bible said in Romans that if you have not the spirit of Christ in you, you are none of his. Don't tell me that you believe on the Lord and that's good enough. He said you've got to have his spirit on the inside of you. I don't know anybody body in this world that ever received the Holy Ghost that regretted receiving the Holy Ghost. I don't know if you have it, but if you have it, you know as well as I do, it was the greatest moment in your life. You can try every drug you want to. There's still no high like the most high God. You can drink... You can drink everything you want to drink. You can get yourself drunk. But I promise you, when you taste of the living water, it will flow from your belly. The Bible said, as rivers of living water, the spanky of the Spirit, you'll never thirst for that alcohol again. There's nothing as powerful as receiving the Holy Ghost. Nothing. The, greatest, the next greatest thing to get the Holy Ghost is praying someone through to the Holy Ghost. I feel there's nothing greater. You're pulling somebody out of hell. I, I love it when the devil has a bad day. I love it when the devil's tormented people their entire life and screamed at them and attacked them. And when they get in that altar, despite all the things they're going through, and they raise their hands, and God fills them with the Holy Ghost, there's something that hell cannot fight. The Bible said when you get that Holy Ghost, that the power of the Lord will come upon you. You shall receive power. After that, you receive the Holy Ghost. When you get the Holy Ghost, there's nothing more powerful than a child of God full of the spirit of his creator and the devil fears you when you're full of the power of Jesus. He may not fear you right now, but if you've got the Holy Ghost inside of you and you activate that baby, you are a dangerous weapon. And hell knows the people in this house that have the Holy Ghost because everywhere they go, they're a threat to the demons of hell that something might happen to hell's kingdom because they have power over the devil. I get the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 2, verse number 4. Acts 2, verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Acts chapter 10, verse 44 through 46. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. Verse 45. And the Bible says, they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. How do they know? For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. The Bible said in uh, Acts chapter 19, verse number 2, verse number 5, and verse number 6. He said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. He said, You can be a believer and not be a receiver. You can believe on Jesus. That does not mean you receive stuff from the Lord. But he said, But when you are a believer, you should be receiving something from God. I can believe on, I can believe anything you tell me. That does not make me a recipient of what you have. You can tell me you're a pilot. I can believe you. That does not make me your passenger. That was good preaching. 
I can, you can tell me you're a doctor. I can believe you. That does not make me your patient. I can believe in all the things that you tell me you can do. That does not make me your patient. You can tell me that you're a lawyer. I can believe that. That does not make me your client. You can tell me you're a pastor. That does not make me your saint. You can, I can believe all the things you say, but there's got to be an act of submission of my power yielding to your power and where I receive something from you and I submit myself to what you can do that I cannot do. And therefore, when you do that, you become the passenger or the client or the patient or the saint. But when you get the Holy Ghost, you can believe on the Lord all day long. That's wonderful. But there's something greater than believing. Going beyond believing is called receiving from the power of God. And when you Yield yourself to God and let God fill you with his spirit. I promise you, I promise you, you will not be the same. You will not be the same. And when you get the Holy Ghost in the Bible, they received it, they spoke with other tongues. That means that when you get the power of the Lord on the inside of you, the proof that you received the Holy Ghost, it will come out of your mouth in a different language. That's what other tongues means. It's something you don't normally speak. If you speak English, it will not be English. If you speak Spanish, it will not be Spanish. It will come out in a different form than what you know. You will not understand it. It will not make sense to you, but you will know this is something I've never felt in my entire life, but I like what I feel because it's the power of the Lord. He knows where you're hurting in your body right now, in your mind right now. I've never seen anyone get in the Holy Ghost and be depressed at the same time. I've seen them depressed when they came for the Holy Ghost. I've seen them full of anxiety when they came for the Holy Ghost. But when they received the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Ghost overrode the depression. It kicked out the anxiety because when God gets on the inside of you, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I'm telling you, it's happening. Like I said, in Stockton, 403 received the Holy Ghost. In San Diego, a couple months ago, 101 people received the Holy Ghost in a revival there. In Muncie, Indiana, that I preached about 76 people received the Holy Ghost. It's happening left and right now. People are getting the Holy Ghost left and right. In Tampa, Florida, last year, in two services, one service, we saw 83 receive the Holy Ghost. In another service, we saw 68 receive the Holy Ghost. In one service in West Palm, Beach, Florida, whether you believe me or not, it happened. I saw with my own eyes 122 people were filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's book of Acts, baby. In the book of Acts, 120 received the Holy Ghost. I have seen something in the book of Acts. 122 people were filled. Don't tell me that you came today without the Holy Ghost and God doesn't want to give it to you. God wants to give you the greatest miracle that you'll ever get in your entire life. I cannot give it to you, but I can tell you what to do to get it. Very simple. Home folks, you know what I'm going to say, but number one, you have to repent of your sins. That's essential for getting the Holy Ghost. Acts 2 verse 38 spoke that. See, Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. It's a promise for you, but you have to repent of those sins. If you don't repent, God's not going to fill you. What do you mean? If you don't tell the Lord you're sorry for what you've done wrong, you cannot repent for me. I cannot repent for you. But if you will tell the Lord, hey, I'm sorry for these things, are you going to be perfect? No, you're not going to be perfect. But repentance is essential. You are yielding your command of your life to God's command of your life. You're telling the Lord, I cannot do it on my own. I mess up more than I succeed. Can I get a witness on that? When I'm in control of my life, but when you are in control of me, something great great happens. I repent of everything I've thought, everything I've said, everything I've thought, everything I've desired, everything I've wanted, because I know my power and my flesh does not help me. The Bible said, in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. It doesn't matter how holy you look on the outside. The Bible said that we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. I believe in being holy. I'm not saying that's right or wrong, but I'm saying that everybody in the building has sinned at one time or or another. It doesn't matter if your neighbor looks down their nose at you like you're less than they are. That neighbor has sinned too. Have you guys noticed I'm doing a good job today? I haven't gotten the audience yet. That's over. 
Did you know that when you come to the Lord and you repent of your sins, everybody that's in this building that came to the Lord prior to you had to repent also of their sins? It does not matter how great they were before God. You have to repent of your sins. I should want to repent of my sins. In just a few minutes before we pray for the Holy Ghost, we're all going to repent of our sins. Bishop, I'm going to ask you to lead the prayer of repentance in just a moment as we're all going to repent of our sins from the top down. We're all going to repent so that everybody in the building has no excuse. If Bishop's repenting, I'm repenting. And you're repenting in Jesus' name. <laughs> Secondly, you must desire the Holy Ghost. If you do not want it, God's not going to give it to you. God can fill everybody on your row with the Holy Ghost, jump right over you and go to someone else if you do not want it. What does that mean? If you come up for the Holy Ghost, and, and I'm not making light, but if you come up like this, I can tell you don't want it. God can definitely tell you don't want it. God's not going to give it to you if you don't want it. He's not going to kick the doors in and say, I demand to be inside of you. That's not how the Lord is. But I should want him to be on the inside, not just around me. I want him on the inside of me. So you have to want it. No matter what anyone else around you does, you have to want it for yourself. Number three, you have to focus on the Lord. You have to keep your mind on Jesus. It doesn't matter who's praying for you, who's preaching the message. It doesn't matter who's beside you, in front of you, behind you. When you're praying for the Holy Ghost, your mind is on the Lord. How do I get my mind on God? Just picture Jesus the best you can in your mind. I know you don't know what he looks like. Picture him on the cross. Picture him, at whatever, on the throne. But get Jesus on you your mind. The devil hates it when your mind is on the Lord because the Bible says I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. So when you have your mind on the Lord, it's a peaceful place that God and you dwell in. Number four, you have to have faith you're going to get the Holy Ghost today. If you believe, well, maybe someday down the road, that's, that's not what I'm talking about. You have to, when we pray for the Holy Ghost in a minute, you have to believe I am getting the Holy Ghost today. God wants me to get the Holy Ghost today. He wants to fill me today. I want him to fill me. That's faith that I'm going to receive it today. You show me somebody with faith for a miracle, I'll show you somebody a lot more likely to get the miracle than someone I've got to convince to want the miracle. And number five, and most importantly, you have to worship God to receive the Holy Ghost. You have to worship him. It doesn't, what does that mean? That means from your mouth, you have to tell him things like, hallelujah, I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah is the greatest way to start praying for the Holy Ghost, by the way. When you start saying hallelujah, it's the highest praise you can give God. And when you start saying those words, hallelujah, it literally in the ancient Aramaic means I give my entire being to Jehovah. I give my everything to you, Lord. And the Bible said God inhabits the praises of Israel. He inhabits the praises of his people. And when you worship God and you start saying hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You're telling me I give you everything. This is the highest praise I can give you, God. This is the greatest thing I can say to you. I worship you. I love you. I thank you. God will begin to dwell in the midst of that. And when God, Shalom Ahaya, and when God dwells in an atmosphere of worship and of praise, he begins to inhabit and he begins to dwell. He begins to move inside of people that are praising him. That's why when you start saying hallelujah, you start feeling the power of the Holy Ghost because you know, I know something just came in the room. I was just saying hallelujah, but the power of God came inside this place. I don't care what background you have, what ethnicity you are. God wants to give you the Holy Ghost. I don't care if you're Pentecostal. I don't care if you're Baptist. I don't care if you're Catholic. I don't care if you didn't believe in Jesus at all before this morning. God wants to give you the power of the Holy Ghost today. It does not matter how old you are. How young you are. How rich you are. How poor you are. God, can I get a witness, wants to fill everybody in this house with the power of the Holy Ghost. It's the greatest miracle that you'll ever receive. Could you stand? Here's what's going to happen. No tricks, no gimmicks. So you know exactly what's going to happen. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. In just a minute, we're going to ask our neighbor a couple questions. After that, after that, I'm going to ask you to come forward that need the Holy Ghost. 
And for that, Brother Johns, Pastor Johns is going to pray a prayer of repentance. If you don't know how to pray, you can pray what he says if you want to, but pray from your heart, not your head. What are you saying? Just don't, don't just repeat the words because he's saying them. Mean the words that he's saying when you pray. Tell the Lord that you're sorry. Whatever he prays, if you don't know how to pray, just pray what he prays, but mean it. Tell the Lord you're sorry for what you've done wrong. And after he's done praying, I will pray the prayer of faith. The altar worker that's with you will lay their hands on you, and you will begin to worship the Lord with all your heart. And as you worship God, some of you will instantly be filled with the Holy Ghost. You'll start speaking with other tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance, and you'll know, wow, that was quick. Some of you may take a few minutes, but worship God. And as they pray with you, they're going to let us know when God fills you with the Holy Ghost. And you're never, and I know this is true, you are never going to be the same again. There's ex-alcoholics in here, ex-drug addicts in here, ex-everything in here right now. And the reason it's ex in front of that word is because they had an encounter that I'm preaching about like this, where God filled them with the power of of the Holy Ghost. Are you ready? We're not dismissed. Could you look at your neighbor, all four neighbors around you, if there's four, and ask them, have you received the Holy Ghost by speaking in tongues? And answer the question, everybody in the building, please. Everybody on the platform's got the Holy Ghost, right? I'm just making sure I do my part, too. I got it, too, yes. If they said no, tell them today's the day. I would not risk a car wreck, an accident, dying in my sleep, a heart attack. I would not risk anything at all. You, if I didn't have the Holy Ghost, you couldn't drag me out of this place until I received it. That's just, there's nothing more important in my life than being born of the water and being born of the Spirit. I want him inside of me. And then one more question, ask your neighbor. If they said yes, would you ask them how long has it been since you received the Holy Ghost? If, if you've not been coming to church in a while, and maybe, maybe it's been years or months and long since you've been filled with the Holy Ghost, God wants to refill you with the Holy Ghost. There's nothing greater than getting the Holy Ghost. There's joy in the Holy Ghost. There's peace in the Holy Ghost. There's righteousness in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. <laughs> The altar workers may come forward, but if you have someone around you right now that needs the Holy Ghost, would you would you do me a favor? I don't know who needs it, who doesn't need it. If I knew, I promise you, you, you have to know that I'm half crazy. I would come back there. Someone said, yeah, really loud. <laughs> who was that? Who was that? I heard you. Someone agreed a little too strongly there. I would come back and say, hey, come on, come on, but I don't know who you are, so I need the help of the people that are here. If the person beside you or behind you or in front of you needs the Holy Ghost, would you, would you say, Brother Josh wants you to come up? I'm going to go with you. Would you bring them up to the front right now? Anyone that needs the Holy Ghost, would you bring them up to the front? People are starting to come. Praise God. Praise God. People are about to get the Holy Ghost. Come on up. Come on all the way to the front. Awesome. Oh, come on, bub. Awesome. Anybody else need the Holy Ghost? I'll wait all day. Trust me. I'm half crazy. Awesome. Awesome. More coming. More coming. Come on, way over here. Awesome. Several children are here today that need the Holy Ghost also. Praise God. Praise God. Awesome. Who needs the Holy Ghost? Come forward. Come forward. Several more are coming. God's going to fill several people today with the Holy Ghost. In both services, they're about to see a major outpouring of the Holy Ghost. More are coming. More are coming. More are coming. More are coming. I've discovered a key. More coming. I discovered a key, uh, Atlanta West. I discovered a key this last year. After preaching here, two things I noticed I needed to work on. Number one was being more positive in the pulpit. But number two, I discovered the reason I see people, more people get the Holy Ghost uh, now than I did before is something very, very, very essential in the audience right now. And that is your cooperation and your worship. I've noticed that when, 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 when the audience is watching, the people in the altar, when they're watching, it takes us longer to pray them through. You know why? Because we're not in one mind and one accord. I've noticed that when everyone's worshiping in the, in the audience, people get the Holy Ghost much faster. 
Why? It's biblical. In the book of Acts, when they were in one mind and one accord, suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. So what I'm gonna, when we're praying in just a few minutes for the Holy Ghost, not yet, but when we start praying for the Holy Ghost, I'm going to be asking everyone in the audience to help me worship God. As my, I know it's tough, but as long and as, as strongly as you can to help these people that are up here that need the Holy Ghost. We're going to have several that need the Holy Ghost. I'm going to need some more altar workers, some people to come up that will help us uh, pray for people that need the Holy Ghost. Here's what's going to happen right now. We're getting ready to all repent of our sins. And after we all repent of our sins, after we all repent, then we're going to pray the prayer of faith, and God's going to fill people with the Holy Ghost. Altar workers, if you're up here and the person beside you needs the Holy Ghost but you don't, when God fills them, Brother Greg, make sure you let me know by throwing your thumb in the air, please. It's not spiritual, but it lets us know that someone else just got the Holy Ghost, and I can keep building faith that, hey, you can get it too because someone else just received it. Does that make sense? All right, well, some more coming too. Uh, Pastor, would you please come up here and would you pray a prayer of repentance and everybody in the building, whether you're seeking the Holy Ghost or praying for God to use you to help someone get the Holy Ghost or helping worship, would you help us repent that makes sure everything's clean in this house so God can move dramatically? I'm going to pray a biblical prayer. Whatever your need is or situation is, I want you to verbalize it to the Lord. Lord, I stand here today on behalf of everyone in this building. For your word is very clear that there is none righteous, no, not one. Your word is clear to say that we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Your word is clear, Lord, that all we like sheep have gone astray and we have turned everyone to our own way. So right now, God, I pray and I repent. I ask you to forgive me. Forgive me, God, for my selfishness and self-will. Forgive me, God, for wanting my own way and demanding my way. I repent today. I turn from my own way to your way. I repent of my sins, God, everything that I have ever said or thought or done that is against your word and your nature. I ask you to forgive me right now. I pray, God, that you would forgive every self-righteous person in this building today that feels like they're good enough on their own without you. I pray, God, that you would forgive, oh God, every person that has done drugs and alcohol who has been sexually permissive, God, and promiscuous. I ask you, God, to cleanse the lust of the flesh, God, that has led people to sin and pornography and lust and adultery and fornication. I ask you right now, God, to forgive us of sins. Forgive me, God. I turn my life over to you today. I turn my life over to you today. I pray that you would forgive every abuser, God, that is in this room right now, that you would wash us clean, Lord. For, oh, God, I know that your power can change us, Lord, from a sinner to a saint. Oh, God, I thank you, Lord, that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. I thank you, Lord, right now, that your blood can cleanse me of every sin. That's it. Would you begin to just pray in your own words right now? Forgive me, God. Forgive me of my sin. I turn around, God. I turn from my own way. I turn from my sins, oh God, and I turn my life over to you. Hallelujah. 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 God is getting ready to pour out his spirit. Hallelujah. We'll need some more altar workers right up here. There are several children that need the Holy Ghost right here. We'll need some more altar workers right around here or to my left. Praise God. If I could get some people to come help me. We've got several children right here that are going to need the Holy Ghost. Thank you for anyone that will come help me, please. Thank you. Altar workers, when they get, when they get ready to get the Holy Ghost... Make sure you let us know when they're speaking in tongues. Make, keep your eyes and ears open. Everyone look up here, please. We're getting ready to pray the prayer of faith. When we do, I'm going to ask everyone in a second to raise their hands to worship God with all their heart. And when they do, altar workers, lay your hands on their head and begin to pray. And as they begin to speak in tongues, let us know. But God is getting ready to pour out his spirit right now. Everyone in the audience, you know what to do. Are you ready? 
You're not repenting anymore. You're not going to beg God anymore for the Holy Ghost. You're not going to tell him you're sorry. You're going to worship him and tell him much you love him and what it means to you. And when it starts to not make sense, let it go and let God fill you with the Spirit. Every hand raised right now. By the authority of the Word of God and by the power of the name of Jesus, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Everybody shout hallelujah. Lay your hands on them and receive the Holy Ghost. Lay your hands on them and command them to receive the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Once already received the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Two have received the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. When they speak in tongues, throw your thumb in the air and let us see. That's it, bro. Number three has received the Holy Ghost. Lay your hands on her head. She's going to speak in tongues. Lay your hands on the head. Let me know when they're speaking in tongues. Let me know when they're speaking in tongues. Let me know. you to help me. I cannot see your thumbs. When they get the Holy Ghost, let us know. We've already had six, seven, yes, seven have received the Holy Ghost. Let me know when they get it. I cannot see you. Hallelujah. God's pouring out His Spirit. God's pouring out His Spirit. God's pouring out His Spirit already in the first service. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Ready, bro? Let's let it go. Now, in the name of both hands. Both hands. Both hands. Come 
If you've got the Holy Ghost, we're warring up here for so another one. Number 10, I see you back there. Just receive the Holy Ghost. Help us pray them through. Help us pray them through. Can you raise your hands? Can you worship God? God's trying to fill people. 10 have already received the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. 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 again come on we're fighting for soul no more music let's go no more music everybody start worshiping the lord god's trying to fill help us fight this thing help us fight this thing we're fighting for the lost souls yes 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 She's speaking in tongues. That's number 12 right here. She's speaking in tongues. This girl's speaking in tongues. That girl just got the Holy Ghost. Number, I counted her. 12 have already received the Holy Ghost. 12 have already received the Holy Ghost. In the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. In the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. That man, come on, bro. Come on, bro. Head to toe, head to toe, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Whatever you hear. You shall receive the gift of, of the Holy Ghost. Hey, come on, come on, bro. It's there. It's there, bro. I love you, Jesus. I love Oshatalahaya. This guy's first service here. God's going to fill him with the Holy Ghost. Come on, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the last day, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. That's it, bro. Come on. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Number 13 just got the Holy Ghost. No, he get it. He got it. Number 14, the little boy just got the Holy Ghost. You see, it works. It works. It works. Hallelujah. 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 Everybody shout. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. 14 have already got the Holy Ghost. 14 people have already got the Holy Ghost. Devil's having a bad day. We're only in the first service. Come on, Jesus. Let it out. Let it out out of your belly. Shall flow rivers of living water. The spanky of the Spirit. That's it. You're doing really good, buddy. You're doing really good. In the name of Jesus. And they were all one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared to them cloven tongues like as a fire and it sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance that's the Holy Ghost that's alive right now that's the Holy Ghost that's alive right now that's the Holy Ghost that's alive right now God will fill you if you want it God will fill you if you want it God will fill you if you want it Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Brother Stacy, where are you? Come over here. Help me out. In the name of Jesus. God, saturate my friend right here. God.
in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Just him now. It's on you, bro. It's on you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Take him, Jesus, right now and consume him from head to toe. In the name of Jesus. Give brother Greg. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm calling on all the prayer warriors right now. I'm calling on all the intercessors right now. We got a few more that are fighting for it now. They're fighting the devil for it now. They're not giving up. Come on, don't give up. Do you remember when you had to fight for it? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Fill them, God. Fill them, God. In the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Thank you for worshiping. Thank you for worshiping. Thank you for worshiping. You help set the atmosphere. You help set the atmosphere. Breaking people through. Breaking people through. Breaking people through. Yeah, he got it. He got it earlier. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got one already to be baptized. You've not been baptized in Jesus' name. Make your way to the corner of the door. God will, ba will baptize you. We'll wash all your sins away in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Hallelujah. Jesus. The Holy Ghost is for everybody. The Holy Ghost is for everybody. <laughs> yeah. In the name of Jesus. 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 We command you to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Yes. Behold, in the name of Jesus, 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 cancer leave this body, in the name of Jesus, cancer leave this body, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, be made whole right now, be made whole right now, in the name of Jesus. That man's praying for the Holy Ghost, this man's dealing with cancer, somebody stretch your hands over here, somebody stretch your hands over here, God fill him and God heal him, God fill him, and there you go, there you go, it started coming out. Come on, it started coming out, bro. It started coming out. Jesus, where every two or three are gathered together in your name. Hallelujah. 
to get worse in the next service. Oh, yeah. There you go. Come on, bro. It's on him. It's on him. No more English. No more English. Let that tongue go. Let that tongue go. There you go. Yes. You're doing it. Let it go. It's all over you, bro. It's all over you. That's it. Make up your mind, bro. Make up your mind. It's yours. It's yours. That's it, bro. Fight for it. This man is fighting for the Holy Ghost up here. He is fighting for the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 Go ahead. Go ahead. the Holy Ghost and if the Bible says the angels rejoice when one repents you can guarantee it's not quiet in heaven right now it's not somber it's not silent but it's very very loud and I want to know if we start the party before next week right now and begin to worship the Lord and thank him for what's already taking place they're gonna sing it again and somebody thank God from the bottom of your spirit Oh, shut up. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. For the Lord is here. The Lord is here. The Lord is here. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Give Him the highest praise. Hallelujah! 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 Give Him the highest praise. Magnify the Lord. Let us exalt. Let us exalt His name together. 
Jesus. Another one, baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Washed his way sins. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Who is like our God? There is no one like the Lord. Who is like our God? There is no one like the Lord. salvation process repent turn from your sins be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins baptism is not an outward sign of an inward grace the Bible teaches that baptism is for the remission of sins or the forgiveness of sins if you've never been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ you need to be baptized today we preach what the Bible says is your urgent need of baptism. In the Bible, people were baptized. As soon as they heard they needed to be baptized, they did not put it off to a certain time or an anniversary. Midnight, the Philippian jailer baptized in Jesus' name. So if you've never been baptized, or if you're not sure what they said when they baptized you, in the Bible, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. If you were baptized any other way, you should be rebaptized in water, just as they did in Acts chapter 19. They rebaptized people. By immersion, they went all the way under the water, and they called over them the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's something that you should do for your salvation. Amen? If you've been baptized in Jesus' name, would you raise your hand? Somebody put you under the water in the name of Jesus Christ, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's thank the Lord again for what he did today. 15, thank you, Lord. 17 people filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost today. Let's celebrate that, church. Amen. Lord, I give you honor and praise. Amen. I appreciate Brother Herring pushing us a little bit to engage and not just watch. Thank you for responding to the preacher in obedience to the Bible. Amen. God bless you.